Good morning, my name is Joe Reingold and I'm interviewing Sheila Rosenberg and today is Monday, February 18th, 2019. Good morning. Good How morning. Are you? Tell us a little bit about your family, what you remember about your grandparents and your parents and where did they live and where, et cetera, where were they born and where did they settle? Well, my dad's parents came from Selva, Poland and they came here through Galveston. They were part of that group that came in the early 1900s. My grandfather, Sam Wilk, came here in 1910. His wife, Rachel, or Rachel, came three years later with two little babies, one of whom died like three months later when they moved, came to the country. And we've actually been to, there are museums you can go to in Galveston where we've seen their names on the manifest, and she, he had to sign for her when she arrived like she was luggage. So he could, you know, claim her, you know. Um, so anyway, they settled in Houston, and that's where my dad grew up. And um, my dad was, um, I guess, fifth out of eight kids. They're the boys and then two girls. And he, um, uh, none of the boys graduated high school. He went to 11th grade because they had to work. I mean, they wanted to work. They wanted to. Um, and his uncle, um, one of his uncles was in, the, was in the scrap business. And a lot of his uncles actually were in the scrap business and got the boys. Mm -hmm. My dad started working for him when he was little. And um, my dad was, was quite the character. He was very, very funny, very handsome guy. And he had a nightclub in Houston in the 30s called Joe and Louie's. And he... Um, World War II started, and he put something in the newspaper that said the draft missed me drift in any time, and then he got his draft notice. <laughs> so he went to World War II, and he, uh, yeah. um, but he was lucky. He didn't see a lot of fighting. He, in fact, on this other video that I have, it almost we always tease him that he went to camp because he was. He was a mechanic, and he was a welder, and he fixed tanks and stuff. And, mm -hmm. um, he didn't see a lot of the, you know, fighting, the combat, stuff, that kind of stuff, whatever. So anyway, um, came back to the States after um, uh, the war, and now I'm getting into, um, I guess I'm getting off on a tangent, but no, it's okay. was working with one of his brothers in San Antonio who started the scrap business and had to go to Chicago to get something for the business. It's 1948, and my dad also wanted a student bank. For whatever reason, the guy in San Antonio would not give him the loan for the student baker. So he takes the train to Chicago, and whoever picked him up from the train, my dad said to him, I need whatever, I wish I knew what that part was, but he said, I need this for the company, I need a student baker, I need a nice Jewish girl. He, in that order. It, yeah. <laughs> so he goes to this party. My mom, meanwhile, already had a boyfriend, and her mother's like, go to this party, meet this you know, just go and be nice, and you, you don't have to just come home after whatever. So my mom, fine, she goes to this party, she sits, my mom was 20 years old, my dad was 31, and she sits on this couch, and there's this guy doing this to her. She says, who is this guy? My father. And um, after a while, they start talking, my father goes into the kitchen and tells the host, Mazel Tov, there's going to be a wedding, you just wait. <laughs> And um, two weeks later, they got engaged, and my father sent his parents a te uh, uh, Western Union okay. telegram that said, Mazel Tov, got the car, got the girl. <laughs> <laughs> and they were happily married for almost 61 years. Wow. So, and that's something. So, so that was my dad's family. My mother's family, um, my mom's mother um, is from Grodna de Berna, Poland. And she came to the States when she was a teenager with her, her family. And then um, her father uh, is from Riga, Latvia. And he came by himself as a, as a young man, 35 cents in his pocket. And um, uh, they met in Chicago, and they met at a dance or something. And um, you know, they were also married a long time. And he was a um, grocer. He was a grocer, and then they had a, I guess you call it an appetizer store, kind of a, a I mean, I would call it a deli, but it wasn't like a restaurant deli. Right. You know, that kind of thing. Okay. Anything else? So, your family stayed, obviously settled in San, your family settled in yes, San Antonio yeah. and stayed there. Mm -hmm. 
And so what was life like growing up there? It was great. It was great. I was, um, um, I was the youngest of three and the very, I mean, I have a brother nine years older than me and a sister seven years older than me, so I was very much the baby <laughs> and babied. Um, my dad and his brother were in the scrap business and, and I had a nice, a nice life growing up. They, we grew up at the uh, conservative synagogue. At the time, San Antonio just had one of each. Mm -hmm. yeah, they had an Orthodox, they had the temple, they had this. Um, and uh, I, I, I kind of had a very, I guess, sheltered, you know, looking back. I mean, it was, uh, it was nice. I mean, I had my best friends and brownies and brothers and sisters. Um, my dad was, uh, and they were involved in the synagogue, um, but they weren't, it was not important for my dad to have his picture on the wall. He was never a president of this or any of that, but he, he built the sukkah every year for the preschool, and he was always, Purim carnivals, he was the one flipping the hamburgers. I mean, he was always wanted to be a worker, and mom always volunteered. She was very, very active, um, volunteering at the Jewish nursing home. In fact, I think she was in charge of the volunteers for a while. She, she never worked outside of the home. She never had a professional job. Um, uh, but always shuttling me and my buddies to our Girl Scouts and dance lessons and tennis lessons and, uh, you know, summer camp and all that kind of stuff. What were you involved in a little bit older? I was really involved in BBYO. Um, my brother and sister were very involved, so I just grew up knowing that and wanting that. And my brother was a beau. He was in Herzl AZA, and he was a beau of uh, David Kenner BBG. And then my sister was in Ben Nathan BBG, and she was Herzl's sweetheart. So when I joined, I got in Ben Nathan BBG, and I was Herzl's sweetheart. Um, Mom was really involved in the sisterhood at, um, at the synagogue. Daddy was in the brotherhood. Um, but he was, he was also um, a shriner. He, um, when I finally came along, he wasn't that involved, but he kept his membership, and it was very, very important to him. He, he always kept that membership up. That's Tell us about what he made So there. my dad was yeah. very creative, and um, when he was older, uh, he started taking painting lessons. In fact, my, well, my sister started oil painting lessons and she didn't like it. And my father said, I paid for it, I'm gonna take the lessons. <laughs> and he, I wish I could bring his pictures. He made these great oil yeah. paintings. And um, he made these in the scrap yard. He, these were from some uh, building that they threw out their chandeliers or something and they, mm -hmm. and he, put this together and made candlesticks. Okay. And he made them for some friends of ours and, you know, family members, of course. And he used It's a great to, gift. He, yeah, he took some of these and made wind chimes and stuff. And he used to, he used to do that. He was very, very handy, very creative. I always think had he had any education, he probably would have been an architect or an engineer. That's, that's how it's mine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what did you do after high school? After high school, um, I went to UT. I uh, studied advertising. I was in a Delta Phi Epsilon. Um, and I got married right afterwards. Um, I like to joke that I advertised myself to my first husband because <laughs> I never used my degree. And for, it's still, I graduated in 83. I've never taken it out of the envelope. It's still, I've never really worked in advertising. Um, but yeah, I married, I met this very cute guy that was in Sammy named Lanny Cooper. And we graduated, I graduated in May and we got married in November. And we lived in Austin for a few months and then that's what brought me to Dallas. We moved here February of 84. What brought you here? Well, he was working in, for his family business. And um, they, they brought us here. So what did you think of Dallas when you first came here? I did not like it. I, it took me four years to really, I used to dream every night of my neighborhood in San Antonio, the first four years I lived here. And uh, my neighborhood, the synagogue, and all that whole life. Um, I, I kind of found it hard to make friends. I, uh, and I'm, I'm a pretty 
pretty social person. Um, but we, we found, I got involved in ORT, and um, I made some friends with other young couples, other young gals that had just moved here with their husbands, and we became good friends. And, um, you know, we started working, I found, we found jobs, and I worked, um, I worked in the management office at North Park Shopping Center for 12 years. Um, that was, uh, that was a good place, and, um, and I'm still friends with those, that group of girls to this day. Okay. We're still, we're, even though a lot of them have moved on, moved away, we, we still, we still keep in contact. What did you guys do as a young couple here in Dallas? What, did you join anything? Did you feel part of anything, participating? Um, we, right away, we became BBYO advisors. Which was kind of a nice experience. Mm -hmm. um, it was, it was, you know, and, and what was also nice. The other advisors were also young people of our age, so we hung out with them. And, and those other people that we met through ORC, we hung out with those people. We we really didn't belong to um, we didn't belong to a synagogue yet. Um, it wasn't until 1986 we bought our first house, and then we joined Beth Torah, and we got involved a little bit. In and children? Children, yes. <laughs> Did um, you have any? <laughs> I had my first son, Elliot, Elliot Adam Cooper, uh, April 1988. And my second son, Louis Drew Cooper, who we call Louis. Uh, he was born October 91. Okay. So, um, and uh, let's see. Um, they went to preschool at the JCC. Uh, they did not go to the Jewish day schools. They, they raised uh, the Hebrew school and everything, confirmation and share with Israel. Um, in fact, Elliot went all through 12th grade. They had Sunday school till you know, mm -hmm. he went all through. And uh, Louis went, I think he stopped in 11th grade. But they had their bar mitzvahs. Uh, they both went to Israel when they were teenagers for about a month in the summer. Um, they went to Echo Hill. Ranch camp, which unfortunately is not around anymore. Mm. It's also where Lanny went to, my first husband. So, uh, Echo Hill was a great summer camp. So. What made you switch synagogues? Oh my. <laughs> well, um, we were on scholarship, and uh, Beth Torah told us we couldn't be on scholarship anymore. Really? Yeah. Hmm. They came to our house, and um, yeah, it was a group of them. And uh, so we switched to Sherith. Um, also, at the time, we had gotten involved in um, Chabad of Plano. And uh, um, the boys went to Gan Izzy many summers, and um, Lanny and I were really involved uh, going there for holidays and any events. and, and um, he was always helping the rabbi with computer stuff. He was he was really good in computers, so just this was always helping him, and, and I, I helped with some events. And I used to we used to they had a couple's um, uh, classes they used to have. We used to like going to those. I'd go to some of their women's events sometimes. So how did you get involved? I know you were involved with a comedy troupe. How did that happen? Wow. Um, well. You know, kind of growing up, I was always kind of funny and the clown and, and this and that. And, um, I used to write a couple of years. I used to have a magazine here, uh, Dallas uh, Dallas Jewish Weekly, mm -hmm. and I used to I wrote a humor column for about two years for them. It was called Stretch Remarks. Mm -hmm. Got two complaints, which is good. It means people were reading it. <laughs> um, that was a lot of fun. And so when Ellie was about fourteen. Uh, I saw this ad in the paper for something called Comedy Sports, and it had a picture of a referee and a whistle, and then I was like, was it a sports bar? I didn't know what it was. So I called it, and what is it? And it's family-friendly improv. So um, I went, uh, we took him about, you know, a couple of boys, about six boys, and we're watching this, and I turned to Lanny, and I said, I can do this. I can do this. And then afterwards, at the end of the show, they said, oh, by the way, we do workshops and classes and this and that. So I signed up for this workshop, and it was a weekend-long thing. And I came home, and I went, this is fun. Oh, my God. I felt like someone plugged me into a light socket because I was just, I can do this. So um, I, I didn't right away join the troupe, but 
they said, look, come and help and this and that. So I, we would help sell concessions and clean up. And, and it got me to know the people in the troop and to learn, as I was taking classes, to learn more about it. And so um, in February 2003, I joined the troop professionally. And a few months later, Lanny also joined. He was a sound and light guy. Mm. And he loved that. <clears throat> so um, I'm still doing it. Um, and uh, unfortunately, Lanny um, was diagnosed with cancer. And he died in March of 2011. So tell us from that point on, what did you get involved in and how did you proceed? Well, um, I was, uh, what did I do? Well, I mean, I, I kind of threw myself in. I did yoga, I taught, I taught Sunday school at Adat Havarim. Um, I was asked to be, one of my girlfriends got me on the board of Hadassah, and that's how I got back involved in Hadassah. I had been a life member for many years, but I never really was involved in anything, so I got involved back in Hadassah. Um, I remodeled my house. I mean, I was, I was very lucky that I had a really great group of family and friends. Um, to, and I like to say they, they caught me before I even knew I was falling. I mean, I was, I was really blessed in that, um, in that sense. I had a niece that lived with me for about five months. So I wasn't really alone because mm -hmm. the boys were away at school at the time. Um, so you know, eventually, uh, I don't want to say moved on, but but time heals, and, and you just kind of wake up, and you just you got to be yourself again. You mm -hmm. know, it just happens. And you just, uh, so how did you meet your second husband? Right. Um, people kept telling me, "Oh, we got a date. We got to find you, man." <laughs> I just, I just, I told myself I'm going to be alone, and I'm going to, I better get used to it because I'm just going to be alone. And um, then after a while, I started wanting to date again. I felt comfortable, and um, I got on J date, and I, I met some nice guys. I met some not so nice guys, um, and then uh, this guy reached out to me. His name on the, uh, his J date name was Rosie Tex. Hmm. And he sent me this message that said, so when were you at UT? And so we wrote back and we texted back. And, not texted, but on the, the message thing on J-Day, we back and forth, whatever. And um, he kept wanting to see me. And I really was busy, work and improv and, and yoga. I do yoga a few times a week. I got involved with that when Lanny died. Um, and uh, I said, look. And I've got an improv show that this coming Saturday night. It's family friendly. Bring your boys. You can meet. So he brought his boys, and um, later uh, he told me later on that when I got up on stage, he said, "See that one there? You're going to get get used to her because you're going to be seeing a lot more of her." So that was Saturday, and then next Wednesday he took me out to dinner, and we broke all the J date rules because I gave him my address, told him where to pick me up because you're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to meet at the place, and that was May of 2013, and we've not been apart since. We got engaged November 2013. We got married November 2014. Uh, his name is Michael Rosenberg. That's where the Rosie text comes from, and it's been nice. It's been what is life like with a blended family? I know a lot of people have that these days, but how did it work? Um, well, it's, it's not easy. It's tough. He has three kids, um, and, and by the time we got together, I mean, our kids are grown. Um, when we got married, let's see. Well, okay, so right now we've been married four years. Elliot is 30. Louis is 27. He has a daughter that's 25, a son that's 23, and another son that just turned... 20. So um, for a while there, we did have four kids in the house. Louie now lives, he's been in California the last couple of years. And before that, he was in Austin. Um, but yeah, for a while there, it was, uh, it was a busy household. And, um, but uh, right now, Naomi is the only one at home still, but she should be moving out. But it's... Um, Oh gosh, you know, they, they were raised a certain way and my kids were raised a certain way and mm -hmm. just got to figure out and how 
Did they get along all right? They, they do. Them? I mean, Elliot had to learn not to eat other people's ice cream in the freezer. <laughs> My thought is, if you want it that bad, you put your name on it. But, um, yeah. It's still a work in progress, let's just say. Okay, that's good. Yeah. As long as you guys are happy. Yeah. yeah. Can you think of anybody in your life that you could say, you could point to and say was a role model for you? Um, well, I guess um, my dad was a big... Um, was a big influence. I mean, he passed away in 2009. He was 92. Huh. My mom, thank goodness, is 91. And um, where does she live? She's in San Antonio. She lives in an independent living place, but uh, she's very active. She still goes to synagogue, mm -hmm. goes and works out, mm -hmm. um, line dances. She volunteers. So, I mean, mom. They both taught me. That, give back. Um, it's not just enough. Um, I mean, it's good to have, but I remember when I was a little girl and I'd seen um, that, I, that we belonged to the JCC and we really didn't go very often. And I was, Daddy, why, why, why are we members of the JCC? And he said, it's a Jewish organization and we need to support it. Um, I remember a really little girl and they used to um, they used to have these uh, bagel breakfasts at the JCC for the servicemen. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is back in like the 1960s. And he would take me with him. And I don't remember if he even knew anybody, but I remember this feeling that this was important, that he ate a bagel with a guy in uniform because mm -hmm. he was a serviceman. Back, you know, he was in the Army back in the war. Um, but, and Mom, they both spoke Yiddish. They grew up. So mom, when, when in the 70s when the Russian immigrants came over, mom would take them to the doctor or the social security office to translate for them, oh. she helped them. Oh. And she would come home and tell me, you and your girls, you, you should see how these people live, and you know, because you and your spoiled little girlfriends, do whatever. So you can appreciate it, huh? Right, right, so I would appreciate it. Uh, do your two siblings live near your mom, or are they spread out? Uh, my sister lives in San Antonio, and so she has to deal with a lot of mom stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but my brother's in Houston. Okay. And so, I mean, we're all in Texas, mm -hmm. so that's good. Mm -hmm. That is good. If you can think of something, what would you be the most proud of? Um, you can say your family, but think <laughs> of, and you can, well, but then something else besides that. I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that I came here not really knowing anybody um, and made my life here. I mean, I, I got jobs and I always worked and I figured things out here on my own. I mean, I made a lot of mistakes, but I was able to figure it out with a, not a lot of help. I mean, I wish I had had a little more guidance or, um, but, you know, Lanny and I came here and we made a life and then when he passed away, I was, I'm very proud of that, that I am, was able to go on mm -hmm. and create chapter two. Just out of curiosity, how have you seen Dallas change since you've gotten here? Well, um, well, besides that, it's just oh, grown. I mean, there are, what, four synagogues, temples when I moved here. Um, just the growth of that, um, I think it's more welcoming. I think um, I did not feel welcome when I first came here. And then Elliot um, had some special needs. He, uh, at the time, ADHD, but now we realize he has Asperger's. And there was not much here for him. Um, there were some things for kids with more serious problems, which thank goodness he did not have, but he, it, was, um, it was very hard for him. It was really hard for him growing up in, in the Jewish community. Um, uh, but he, uh, he was bar mitzvahed, like I said, he confirmation, he, uh, he still considers himself, I mean, he's Jewish, at least my boys are Jewish, and 
anybody knows nice Jewish girls to fix them up with. <laughs> so we're at that part. Um, uh, but uh, I, I, now there's more. There seems to be more in, inclusion. There's um, they're aware of these other kids and don't leave them out. And how can we bring them in and, and make them be part of of what's going on? How long did you teach Sunday school? Uh, well, let's see. I taught for two years at Beth Torah, and then um, years later I taught for about two years at Adat Havari. So did you see any changes there? I'm just curious as far as the way Sunday school was run. Um, not, not really. Um, one really, well, at Beth Torah I taught um, second graders, and then at Adat I taught seventh and eighth graders, oh. which, yeah, those are two different animals, let me yeah, tell you. Very that. much. Um, <laughs> a, one was, well, at Adat, it was, it was really helpful. Um, now they have the, uh, oh, I hope I did this right. Um, it's based up Jackson, Mississippi, the uh, Jewish... The new curriculum? Yeah, that, yeah. whatever yeah. that curriculum is. IHL something. Yes, yeah. 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 So um, when I, the first year I taught, it was really make up what you actually at, at Beth Torah as well it really wasn't Structure. it was kind of just figure it out yourself so I was mm -hmm. thrown into and I didn't know what to do and I figured well I'll do life cycle things so I mean we had a class on you know the Jewish wedding and I brought my wedding books and, mm -hmm. and taught them about a wedding and a wedding cake um, we learned about kashrut, and we learned about, I mean, I brought the videos of my boys' brisses, which I'm sure they appreciated, but, you know, went to, they didn't know, and we, um, I brought in somebody to talk about the Jewish way of death, and I just, just mm -hmm. figured out, but, but then the, um, that curriculum came, and that, that really helped a lot, that I didn't have to do that mm -hmm. work to prepare, because it was, they handed me a book, and there were the lesson plans. Well, Sheila, is there anything else that we haven't covered or anything else you'd like to add to the interview? Oh, my. Well, um, I, I don't know. Just uh, um, getting back growing up, uh, um, I just had this really great, I guess if you had a Jewish kind of Brady Bunch uh, <laughs> childhood, you know. Um, I mean, I was, I just, Hebrew school twice a week and junior congregation on Saturday. Sunday school on Sunday. I went to Camping Judea, um, and uh, it was just just so much a part of who I was that I never thought to. It was just so much of my world. I mean, I remember being in Brownie Scouts, and me and my little girlfriends. It was Passover. We were doing this camp out, and they're making not Bunsen burners, but you know, you get the coffee cans, and they were, all the other girls were making popcorn, and my girlfriends and I were doing matzo bread. <laughs> That's great. And I, I never heard any anti-Semitic thing until I came to Dallas. I'd never been called anything. Um, so that was that was a, a, a real awakening to me when I moved here. You had an incident with that? I had a, I had a couple, yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, but it's my home. I've been here 30 plus years. This is where I am. My kids are Dallasites. I mean, this is uh, my my current husband. So Michael grew up in Israel. I mean, no, he was born in the Bronx. His family made Aliyah when he was 12, and he lived there uh, till he moved here in 1986. But all his family is there, and um, in the four years we've been married, we've been to Israel twice. We're planning to go again, and. Um, well, we're happy to have you here. And thank you so much for this interview. Well, Appreciate fun. it. Good. Okay.